Hello, I'm Dr. Will Kala at Precision Fine Chiropractic Clinic in Orchard Road, Singapore. Here is a fascinating paper recently published that I want to talk about to you today. It's looking at the relationship between neck pain, cervical disc herniations, and cervical lordosis. And this is in people below the age of 40 years old. So I want to read a part of the introduction for you. And the values are so well aligned that it could have been me writing the same thing. Chronic neck pain is common affliction in middle aged and elderly patients with 30 to 50% prevalence and seriously affects their quality of life. The etiology of neck pain is complex and possibly related to disc herniation, facet joint, muscles, and ligaments. Due to excessive movements of the cervical spine, long-term bad posture and lifestyle choices, and soft tissue damage in the neck, cervical stability gradually decreases and can lead to loss of cervical lordosis. Abnormal cervical curvature, including excessive or meager cervical lordosis, loss of cervical curvature, kyphosis and complex cervical curvature is an early manifestation of degenerative changes in the spine. The normal cervical curvature is essential for maintaining balance and motor function. And any of the aforementioned abnormalities can destroy cervical spine structure, leading to biomechanical dysfunction, bone hyperplasia, that's bone spurs, cervical muscle injury, and ultimately cervical spondylosis. Therefore, it is very important to restore the normal cervical curvature while treating cervical spondylosis. That's exactly what we've been doing in our clinic for the past 10 years now. And this is what I've been talking to all the patients. So it's very nice to actually have a research paper with independent researchers from an orthopedic spine clinic mentioning the same thing and sharing the same values. So in this study, they were looking at 300 people, uh, both males and females, pretty much evenly spread out and age ranging for 16 to 40 years old. Okay, so these people were actually going to an orthopedic department having neck pain already. So that is slightly skewed with some of the results, but they will also show some of the data when they randomly select those people. So what they were looking at, they took x-rays of all these people and then they were starting measuring the neck. So if you look at a cervical curvature like this, cervical lordosis, when you're facing forward this way, they took a line from the top line of C2 to the bottom of C7, and then they measured how deep the curvature is. If it was above 7 millimeters, it was considered a cervical lordosis. If it was below 7 millimeters and straight, it was considered straight neck. And if it was below 0 millimeters, it was considered kyphosis. So they split them evenly, in, uh, these three groups. Something that was very interesting here, a higher number of female patients were seen in the straight and kyphotic groups, over 60%. Then in, compared to the low dosis group at 36%. So quite interestingly spread that you actually have more females having loss of normal cervical lordosis, uh, either being a straight neck or even a kyphotic neck. They go on writing. In recent years, the lifestyle of the younger demography has become increasingly sedentary with students and office workers spending long hours sitting in front of their computers, resulting in higher incidence of cervical curvature abnormalities. I would also add smartphone use is a big problem in this category. A lot of people are on the smartphone that they keep looping around on the screen like this. When in fact, you should actually try to keep it in front of your face. In other papers that they were getting information from, Chinese teenagers with neck pain and reported cases of an abnormal cervical curvature. So they were looking at here in people from six years old up to 35 years of age. They were looking at about, uh, about 1,500 cases in total. They were finding that 62% to about 77% had abnormalities in the neck curvature. So yeah, this is a group that actually is already having symptoms. But what about people in general that don't have any symptoms? So there was another study done some years ago, randomly selected 4,681 students, and they took x-rays to examine the cervical curvature. So these were randomly selected. Out of those, 29% showed findings of abnormal cervical curvature. That's a lot. So basically in any healthy population with normal range of age ranges, you know, people below 40 years old, 30% have loss of normal cervical lordosis. And we know that that's gonna lead to cervical uh, spondylosis, disc herniations, neck pain, stiff neck. So usually start with a stiff neck, you have tightness in your neck, stiff neck, you start having pain in your neck, maybe tension, headaches, shoulder aches and pains. Then you start having degenerative findings. And these degenerative findings you can already find in 30 year olds. 
you know, so you have disc herniations already in your early 30s. Then you start having bone spurs and more severe disc degeneration. So it's very important that you actually start fixing your normal cervical lordosis, restoring back to normal. In this paper, they further write, we confirmed a strong correlation between cervical lordosis and disc herniation. And that's a pretty severe finding. So a lot of doctors, or if you have an x-ray, or they're saying, okay, you're, you have a loss of normal cervical lordosis, or you even have a kyphotic neck. I've actually seen orthopedic surgeons saying that that's not a problem. We already know where it leads to. You're not going to be resolved. You're not going to get well without fixing it. In the paper, they further write, we also observed that some patients showed improvements in cervical kyphosis after treatment. They found that the degree of disc herniation was decreased and the height of disc spaces was increased. So with treatment, they could actually reduce the severity of the disc bulge and they could actually increase the height of the discs. Now, do remember that these are people below 40 years old. These results strongly indicate that restoring the cervical curvature is vital for improving cervical disc herniation. I mean, that's pretty much a no-brainer, okay? So if you can fix your neck curvature, restore it back to normal cervical lordosis, reducing the stress on the disc, you'll have far more healthy years in front of you. So I urge all my patients, if they have a loss of normal cervical lordosis, to get it fixed and restored, and that's a rather easy, straightforward thing to do, okay? In our experience for the past 10 years, we can fix 9 out of 10 cases in 2 months. And that's in 24 sessions. So it's worthwhile the short time and effort to put in the effort to get yourself corrected and fix your neck so you can have, enjoy many pain-free years of your life. So that's all the important uh, comments that I had from this uh, research paper. Uh, if you have any issues with your neck, or any other further inquiries and all that, you can always email us at, at ask, ASK at precision-spine.com and we will help you the best we can. We can answer a lot of your questions. Of course, we urge you to come in for a consultation, look at your x-rays to know what your current state is, and we can then decide and show what we can do for you. Thank you.